Hi, y'all. Craig and Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. Welcome to my guide on how I make pet battles easy. So this is not how to start pet battles or how to get into pet battles. This is simply how I make them easy. So the first thing we're going to do, since we're going to get right into this, I'm doing this a little bit live format. That way you can see how easy this really is. So whether you have only like two pets or like 200 pets, this will be super easy for you to get into, I promise. So first thing you want to do is we need three specific add-ons. So the first one is rematch. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting rematch. I use WowUp for my add-ons, so that's what I'm looking at here, but I'm sure you can find it on Curse and some other places as well. Rematch. I use rematch. That will help you with your pets. It remembers your teams. You can set up scripts and things, which is the next part of what we're going to get here. Type in TD and you should be able to find TD Battle Pet Script. And the third one is TD Battle Pet Script Rematch. You want both of those. Those are all going to be very important into what we're doing here. So once you've got those, and you are at, say, any pet battle world quest or pet battle. It doesn't matter if it's a world quest. You could be at any trainer in the Azeroth universe. I mean any of them. There is battles all over the planets. So I have here Thenia as an example. Uh, we want to do Thenia's loyal companions. And I'm having, you know, we'll just say theoretically I'm having a hard time with this. And I'm tired of doing it manually. So what we're going to do. We're going to open our pet journal here. And if you, you can see that this is, well, with LVI at least, I have LVI on, but this is more or less what your base pet journal is going to look like. But you can turn rematch on and suddenly, suddenly it looks complex. But don't worry about that. We're not using everything in rematch. We're just using a couple of small things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually flip over to wowpetguide.com also known as Zufu Strategies. This is the best pet site ever as far as strategies and teams go. I cannot stress that enough. And it works great with rematch and TD script. You see those here? We have a rematch string and a TD script string. What does that mean? So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the rematch string button and it says copied to clipboard. Okay. So that means that saved this team here because I clicked Thania's loyal companions, had that already ready. She is the world quest we want to do. So you go to teams, import teams, and as it says here, press control V to paste a team from the clipboard. Bam. Now don't bother reading all that. It looks confusing. You simply hit save and suddenly it imports the team. Granted, you have these pets, of course, and I'll get to that in a second. And it has the correct move sets for them. Very cool. So now we have that. However, we're not done yet. Here we have TD script. Copy that. And we're going to right click. So as you can see here, it made one. I likely already had this, so it already has a script on it. Uh, but we're going to right click it and write script. Now see here, it already shows uh, the team. But you're going to control V here as well. So hit save. Now we have both a team and a script. Now what does that mean? So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to hop into this battle. And you're going to notice that A, you have the team that it, it made for you. Granted, you have those pets. Again, I'll address that in a second. And B, you have this new button over here. It'll say different things depending on something I will address in a second. But you can click it or use the hotkey that we will set, which I will show you how to do that momentarily. Now, you simply spam that button or click it, however you want to do that. And you'll notice it seems to be battling for you. <laughs> Don't worry, this is not a form of botting, even though it may kind of feel like cheating. I mean, it is kind of cheaty, but not really cheating. You're still technically playing the game. It's just helping you. It's helping you do your own 
battles. And well, you know, why would you want to make it this this brain dead? Well, first of all, I'm not really into pet battling, but I love pet collecting. And to do collecting, you need to do the battling. And I like to hang out with friends and chat and RP and stuff and voice chat. And you know how hard it is to concentrate on a battle? Do it correctly and uh, RP or chat and gaff at the same time? <laughs> Trust me, it's very difficult. You will mess up and fail repeatedly. But look at that! Bam! Battle complete. Done. So that's pretty rad. Now, what exactly does this mean? <laughs> I just completed this world quest and I had the team and I imported all of it from Zufu's using Rematch and TD Pet Battle Script. So let's go look at TD real quick so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If we go down here into your add-ons, TD Pet TD Battle Pet Script, rather. There's not a whole lot of options. Um, I like hiding the minimap button, but simply here's where you can select your hotkey. I have it as space. You can set it to R, you can set it to whatever you want. I like it as space because that sits under my thumb. And that's what you'll be spamming there in the, you know, inside. Now, the teams. I said I would address the teams here. If you don't have the pets that this team is recommending, because maybe you're new, maybe you're fresh, that's okay. A, the first bonus is it's telling you what pets you should have, and you can look up those pets and go figure out where to get them. So if you don't want to collect like every pet in the game, you can just go get the specific ones you need for specific world quests. And there's a little button over here. See this little arrow? This says strategy one of 30. You can just hit the arrow. Oh, look at that. Hey, we have another team. Also has five stars, so that's pretty rad. That's another team that is specific for this trainer. Oh, you don't like that one? Let's go to the next one. Let's see if there's another team. It says there's 30 of them. I bet you there's 30 of them. Oh, look, there's another one with slightly different pets. And these ones even appear to be leveling ones. It's, you could probably level with those. So that's pretty neat. So you get my point, I hope. Um, this is amazing. Let's hit the browse alternatives. Yep, there we go. This site is amazing for pet battles. They almost always have TD scripts on them. And if you don't want to use the script part, maybe you don't like the script part, but you do want to use rematch to save teams and stuff. That's perfectly fine because... It also, if you look down here, on whatever team you've chosen, it tells you what moves, what abilities you should use in what order. When to swap stuff, when to pass if necessary. And that's absolutely awesome. I've used this way longer than I used TD Script. I didn't use TD Battle Pet Script for the longest time because it felt cheaty to me. But now I'm lazy and I just import those. Now, if you happen to find one, because that this will happen, that does not have a TD script. Um, you will A, either have to make your own script, which I don't know how to do. That feels complicated to me, so I'm not going to get into that. Or B, you use the moveset here and just do it manually. Or if you scroll down and check comments. Oh, hey, look at this. This person here seems to also have a script. And you can, you can recognize those by, you know, it has use and the abilities and such. So if one here doesn't have a script attached to it that you can just copy, check the comments. Always check the comments. They almost always have, like, there's another one. There's another script variant, it looks like. So you got options. And again, if you don't have these pets, you can A, either keep scrolling through the teams until you find one that has your pets, or... This will tell you what pets to go get if you wanted to start. So this is actually great for people starting as well because you'll know what to target. Like the Stormborn Whelpling and the Iron Starlet. <laughs> you need those. You definitely need those because I can tell you right now, those are used in a lot of different pet battles. So this is perfect because, you know, if you get a team and it's specific for one trainer... Those pets you have, you keep them, and you're going to need them for other pet battles in the future. So it just compounds and becomes better 
and better. So I know this was super, 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 super brief, but that's really all there is to it. Your, even if your collection is small, this site can at least give you directions on what specific pets you're going to want. Because as you can see here, let's take a tour of the site real quick. We have right now Shadowlands World Quests is what I'm under. It has all of the World Quests, all four of them for each zone, which is pretty rad. But we also have Pandaria. We have like the the Master Tamers. We have the dungeons, including the Celestial Tournament over in Pandaria. We have miscellaneous stuff like the Dark Moon Fair. We've got we've got the Pet Menagerie in Draenor, Tanan Jungle. We've got the Falcosaur stuff in Legion. And on and on and on. And this is just... I mean, there's even a PvP section, which I've not used myself. But it this whole site is beautiful. I cannot speak for it enough. I absolutely recommend you get at least rematch, if not both rematch and TD Battle Pet script. So I think I've jawed on that long enough. That is literally all there is to it. You just... Plug them both in by using import, import your team, and then you right click it when you have the team up, and you write your script if you want that part, and then you just go in and, since I can do her again, and now I can just spam the space bar and fight her again. And I can just chat and blabber and not have to worry about messing up. Now, of course, sometimes these scripts aren't perfect you know and sometimes rng is involved so don't be sad if like it's it fails even though you're doing exactly this that will happen you just either try again or find a different team or you know trial and error you, you'll, you'll find your teams and the best part is remember we're using rematch and what did i say rematch also does it saves your teams see all these over here these are all my saved teams that i currently have a lot of them are very out of date because I've been using rematch for ages, but you get the idea. So I think that's more than enough on that little detail here. That's it. That is actually 100% how I make pet battles easy. And why you might want to do pet battles outside of, you know, for the sake of it, is pet battles can give you XP. If you're doing the current stuff, pet battles can give you tokens like charms and bandages and things. They can uh, level your pets. And they can also give rep. That is a big thing that some people have been getting into pet battles for is rep. You can see I, I gained rep with the Ascended here because this was a world quest. So I think that's enough on that. Hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. I am no pet battle master, but... This is exactly how I pet battle, so... Whether you're new to pet collecting or an old veteran, you'll likely notice one major factor. There are so many pets! According to Rematch here, there are currently over 1,500 unique pets. <laughs> so, uh, where do they all come from? Well, there are multiple sources, such as vendors, raids, reputation, and so on. One of the largest sources actually comes from the open world of Warcraft itself. These are the little cuties that you see wandering around the various lands amidst other world mobs and NPCs. A large majority of your total pet collection is tradable, so you can buy a fair amount of them on the auction house if you want. But those open world pets I just pointed out? Nope, you'll have to catch those on your own through pet battles. No tradesies here. Plus, having a lot, if not all, of the open world pets on hand is recommended, not just for collectors, but battlers too, as many of the staple battle pets come from this source. So, since there are so many that you'll have to get on your own accord, here's some pointers on how to make that part easy on yourself. This is what I did when I started. First, you'll want to download the add-ons Rematch and Pet Tracker. Rematch is a wonderful add-on that amps up your battle pet UI and adds in a lot of ways that you can sort what you do and don't have. This is a great way to help identify where you are in your collection as well as keep better track of pet levels and quality. And to note, whether you're a general collector or you prefer battling, Rematch is the main go-to add-on for all of that. 
That's why I mentioned this for you in case you don't have it. Pet Tracker, however, is the add-on I want to focus on here, as this is what will help us go after the battle pets caught in the open world specifically. This will show you what pets you need in each zone, both in a quest list format and where they are visually on the zone map. First, let's get set up. You've got some different tracking options, which you can find in a few different places and are all important to getting you ready for your collecting adventure. Right-clicking on the quest objective banner, the one that says Pets, will let you turn off captured pets, which I like to do as it gives me a clearer list of what I need. Look at this handy list! It's like tracking a quest! Simple. There are even icons on the names of each pet that tell you if there are pets from other sources in the area as well. Like the Hyacinth Macaw here is a random drop from Zone Mobs. The green paw icons are pets from battles specifically, which is what we're focusing on here as those are the ones you have to get yourself. You can buy the macaw on the auction house, so he doesn't count. Now, in the upper right corner of your world map, you can set your filter to missing. So you can target exactly what you need via these little icons and it filters out what you already have. Isn't that awesome? Now you can look at your maps and just scan through the zones to see where you need to go before you get all the way over there. It's super handy to plotting out a course. There are also a few more options found under the add-ons interface options where you usually find other options and stuff like this for add-ons. I sort of just leave most of these alone other than turning off the battle section, but other than that, you're good to go with Pet Tracker now. One more tip for you though before you go. There are also the Safari achievements that you can track from your achievements list as well. You can find these under Pet Battles and Collect. These can help you make sure that you've got everything from each expansion just in case the add-ons miss something. No matter what kind of player you are, it's likely you've come across this curious currency. Polished Pet Charms. True to their name, these charms are used to buy items for your pets, as well as the pets themselves from vendors. Whatever you want to use them for, they are actually quite important to the pet battling and collecting world as they give you access to upgrade stones needed to increase your pet's level or quality. One of the main sources of this currency is from world quests, which of course require you to do pet battles. While these are pretty easy, so long as you have a decent collection, what if I told you there was another source that didn't require battling? Before I show you what that is, I want to preface that this is a one-time-per-character source, and is best taken advantage of with all the alts you may have. Plus, just doing the world quests, assuming there are several active that reward charms, is technically faster. But, like I said, no battles are needed for this. The battle for Azeroth, Isles of Zandalar, and Kul Tiras both have an assortment of unique, static, one-time treasures that spread across the zones, much like many other expansions. However, there is a handful of these treasures that actually reward a small amount of, you guessed it, polished pet charms. And there are a couple of rares that do as well. There are technically more sources like this than I'm about to show you, but these are the ones that I find are the easiest to get and don't need anything funky beyond zone access unlocks. There are some rares in Shadowlands that drop charms as well, but until those are scaled down, they're a bit of a pain to get to. The ones I've collected here for you are the ones that take the least amount of effort and thus, in my opinion, are actually worth the time. So. In this list, I have seven chests and two rares, all from the BFA zones, which will reward you with a total of 50 or more pet charms in about 15 to 20 minutes, assuming you have flying. Since I know I am not the only visual learner, let's go through each of these real quick so you know where they are. In Northwestern Drustvar, we have the Merchant's Chest. This one requires a key to open, but worry not, the raven who has the key is flying around above you. Just kill it to get the key. Down in southwestern Drustfar, we have the stolen Thornspeaker cache. This is guarded by three of those wicker beasts inside of a little cave, so just kill them and you should be able to get to the chest. 
Still in Drestvar, we have the Beastly Ritual Skull, which actually spawns the rare, the Cottontail Matron. Now, if you don't see this star or the skull, move on. I've definitely done this rare without the world quest, but it seems to have a long spawn timer, so if you don't see it, don't worry about this one. Up in northern Tiragard Sound, on a rock outcropping, we have the precarious Noble Cache. Nothing fancy needed for this one, just go loot it. Up in western Stormsong Valley, we have the rare Poacher Zane. This guy should be up pretty much all the time, and he's got a short spawn timer, so have at. Over in eastern Stormsong Valley, we have the sunken strongbox found under the water beneath the ship that is docked here in its little harbor area. Jumping across the pond to Zoldazar, we have the Exile's Lament. This is in a cave on the eastern side, and there's no other requirements to get to it. Over in southern Voldoon, we have the Deadwood Chest. This is on its own little rock outcropping, so just hop up there and get it. Up in northwestern Voldoon, we have the Sand Sunken Treasure. There's a little bobber here in the water. You just click on that and it will spawn. Phew, that's quite the list. We're not done yet though. I have a few more things you should know. First, I'm sure you noticed that these span across both Zandalar and Kulteras. This means that you will need to be at least level 35 because you need to have unlocked at least one opposite faction foothold in order to access the opposite faction zones. Not too big a deal, though it is annoying that those unlocks are not account wide. Bleh. I'm also sure you've noticed that I've included the waypoints for each treasure or rare for you. It's quite the list and I have it all in the description. To make this easy on you, the add-on aptly called Paste is the one that I highly recommend you get for this, as you can copy and paste lists of waypoints all at once, instead of one at a time. And of course, you'll want the add-on TomTom for the waypoints and arrows to accompany this. You could also get the Handy Notes add-on for Battle for Azeroth Treasures if you want, but it's not really needed since we have the waypoints and we don't want to go after all the treasures, just these ones. As one last tip, since the chests are once per character treasures, the best way to know if you've done these is to check your Treasures of X zone achievements, like Treasures of Voldoon, Treasures of Tiragard Sound, etc., to see if that character has already looted the ones of the matching names in the list. Handy! Did you know that there are teleports to Northern Barrens, Westfall, Nomorgon, Eastern Plaguelands, and the Blackrock Mountains? These teleports are account-wide and usable by alts of both factions at almost any level. That means you can get around to these remote points a heck of a lot easier. But of course, you'll have to unlock them first. Don't worry, it's easy though. All you have to do is complete the corresponding pet dungeons at least once to unlock each one. You can pick up the first quest in the pet shop in Baralis or Zoldazar, and then completing that will lead you to the next. Even if you've never battled with pets before, I promise you this is really easy. I've done guides on these myself, but you can also refer to Zufu's pet guides, which will lead you through each fight step by step and show you alternative teams that you can use. I've got a link to all of those in the description and in a pin below. Just remember that even if you feel intimidated by all that, you only have to do each one once. Just once, and these teleports are unlocked account-wide forever. Once you do, you can find these teleports with Manapoof, an arcane elemental, in the pet shops in Legion's Dalaran, Boralus, and Zoldazar. I recommend using the Dalaran one, simply because you can use your Dalaran hearthstone and go straight to those teleports without wasting your main hearth. And you can do this on level 10 alts too. It's a great way to get around. Did you know that you can't mount inside most instances? To most of you, that's probably a no-brainer. I mean, duh, Kraken. But do you know what thorn that also brings? Full bags. 
Even with the large 30 and 32 slot bags, if you do a lot of instance farming for transmog, mounts, gold, or whatever, you'll know that your bags will fill up quick. And you can't mount on your mammoth yak or bruto to vendor stuff. It's kind of annoying. So, I'll let you in on my little secret. Well, it's not a secret, but still. There are two pets you can get, called the Guild Herald and the Guild Page. The names should point out where they come from, which is from your guild's vendor. Of course, there's a few quirks about these that you need to know. Firstly, your guild needs to have earned the achievements to unlock them. The Horde slash Alliance Slayer achievement, which is to complete all the Slayer PvP achievements by killing a large variety of race class combos, is what unlocks the guild page. This one could take a while. The Guild Herald, however, is arguably much easier to get, as this one requires the Profit Sharing Achievement, which is to loot 100,000 gold from creatures. If your guild has been around a while, you may already have this one unlocked. With either of those completed, you can go to your guild vendor in one of the major cities and buy them for a few hundred gold. They're fairly cheap, which is nice. Both of these, as you may have guessed, are companion pets, like battle pets that can't battle, that you can summon anywhere, including instances, which is what I'm getting at here. And the best part? They can act as vendors! Woo! But beware though, they can only stay active after you summon them for five minutes and have a few hour cooldown. As far as I know, the Guild Herald has the shorter cooldown, but I'm not sure what those cooldowns actually are. I couldn't find a specific answer for some reason. There is another quirk you need to be aware of. These pets are, unfortunately, character specific. So if you want them on alts, each alt has to buy them. So again, I sure hope you don't plan on changing guilds for your alts anytime soon. And there we have it. If you think I've missed information or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.